in countries around the world, in addition to the UK, we're seeing this uprising by, by citizens, this uprising by the people against these, these elites who have embraced a great reset mentality or this new liberal world order mentality. And, and I, I, I don't use those phrases lightly. I use those phrases to describe this ideology where elitists believe that they know better than you. They, they label themselves as the, as the expert and you as you know, the sorry, ignorant person. And they say, if we believe it's best for you, then you must accept this without question. You don't get to decide what's right for you. We'll decide right for you. And once they've set this, this premise, then they abuse that premise. They say, well, climate change is happening. Climate change is going to hurt you. Therefore, since we're the experts and you're not a scientist, we will tell you how to fix climate change. And under the guise of quote unquote, fixing climate change, they push all kinds of, of crazy liberal policies. This is where we get the ESG standards, the environmental, social, and governmental metrics. It's a social credit score that's being applied to businesses. And if you don't adhere to this radical leftist ideology as a business, you'll get a low score on this ESG metric. And therefore, you'll be, you'll be edged out. You won't be able to get a loan. You won't be able to do any business with investment firms. You won't be able to start your business or operate in our economy unless you tow this, this radical leftist ideology. And we've seen leaders of Western nations embrace this Great Reset World Economic Forum ESG climate change agenda, not just in the UK. And it did happen in the UK. You'll remember that Boris Johnson, he came in as ostensibly as a, a no-deal Brexit conservative. But what did he end up doing? He ended up locking down the British people time and time again. He ended up acting as a tyrant who pretended to be an expert or using the excuse of, of science and expertise. He he tyrannized his people. He, he inflicted lockdowns on them that led, studies show, to more deaths than, more deaths from the lockdowns than perhaps even, even from COVID. The same thing happened in Canada. So Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is facing massive scandals right now. So not only did, um, did he reject the trucker convoy, did he ban the truckers from, from protesting the vaccine mandates that, that hurt them, that violated their, their medical freedom, but right now he's facing a massive scandal in Ottawa and, and a massive scandal because he is still doing what he threatened to do. He is still cracking down on anybody who participated, who organized, who supported, even monetarily supported the trucker convoy. You'll remember that video from a couple months ago where he said, if you gave even $50 to this trucker convoy, we will find you. Banks will find you. Your account will be frozen. You will be cut off. And we will not, we will be unrelenting hunting you down because we will not tolerate, well, you, you and your behavior. Well, fast forward to today, there are massive protests happening against Trudeau's government in Ottawa because there is a woman named Tamara Litch who was an organizer of the Freedom Convoy and she remains in jail because she she had the audacity, she had the audacity to participate in an award ceremony, an award ceremony given by um, a, a right-wing group of two basically freedom fighters in this Freedom Convoy. And a, according to Trudeau's government, that violated the, the terms of her parole. She was not allowed to appear on social media in any way, shape, or form. Um, and they threw her back in jail. And the people, the people of Canada are protesting against this because this is such a massive, massive scandal. People are chanting free Tamara Leach. Look at the crowd. First of July, Canadian Day. Marching for freedom in downtown Ottawa. Now, this, I mean, that's not a small crowd. That's a big crowd of people, of Trudeau's constituents, his voters, who understand that what he did first with the trucker convoy and then again targeting conservatives via the banking system and then telling Canadians that they have no right to self-defense with guns, that, that this is, this is the, the liberal world order that, that these politicians like Trudeau have embraced. This is the impact that the liberal world order or the new world order implemented by liberals, if you want to be more precise here, um, this is the impact that it has, that it has on people. This is why Trudeau's, Trudeau's popularity has tanked 
It's why he's he's incredibly disliked by the people who elected him just several years ago. The same thing is happening in France. President French President Emmanuel Macron in France recently lost his majority. He won re-election, yes, but he lost his mandate to govern his country. He lost the ability to push his agenda through because the people of France understand that what Emmanuel Macron has done, especially through COVID, COVID for everything else that it 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 was, for everything that the left used it as an excuse to do, it has exposed the left for what they are, that they will use any anything that they can term an emergency as a way to impose their will, their political agenda on us. And so Emmanuel Macron lost his majority. He's now going to be forced to negotiate with the conservative Republicans in his country. It, it, it's basically the equivalent. What happened to Macron is the equivalent of a midterm election here in the United States where the president's party gets absolutely shellacked. So hopefully what will happen here in the United States in just a couple months to the Democrats in the House and Senate, that's what happened to Emmanuel Macron in France. And what will he be able to accomplish now that he doesn't have uh, this mandate, that he doesn't have a majority? I mean, his party wants um, higher pay for public servants, higher pay for government employees. And, you know, the right in his country wants tax cuts. They want they want spending to be reduced. They 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 want sensible fiscal policies, and Macron stands for the opposite of that. He is he is the Joe Biden of France, and his people have said no. His people are saying no. We're not we're not going to give you a mandate to govern that way anymore. The same thing in Italy. The Italian premier Mario Draghi in Italy. Now this guy is a swamp creature. If you if you have ever seen one, he previously worked for the World Bank, and he actually his mandate when he got elected was to implement a technocratic government. What is a technocratic government? A technocracy means that so-called experts rule based on their area of expertise. So it's essentially what Fauci was trying to usher into the United States, that if a public health official says so, if a scientist says so, who are you the voters to question and why should you have any right to make any decisions or have any say over the policies that the scientists think are best? That's what a technocracy is. And that's what the premier of Italy was, was, was trying to do. He was trying to turn the Italian government into a technocratic government. And the result of that was insane lockdowns. You remember Italy at the beginning of COVID-19, their lockdowns were some of the harshest. They, to this day, have a green pass. It's what's called a green pass. It's, it's a vaccine passport in Italy. They have a requirement, uh, a, a mandate, a vaccine mandate for everybody over the age of 50 in their, in their country. Um, this this is this is so extreme. The the, the policies of of Italian pri- or Italian Premier Mario Draghi is so extreme that he almost faced an early election. The people almost kicked him out entirely um, because the populist movement in his country said, "I don't think so." The impact, the negative impact of these policies on the people are becoming very evident. And the policies they're not just COVID related. It's an ideology that underpins the COVID policies, this ideology that says you're stupid, you the people are stupid, and we know better. We want a, a climate change-based ESG, liberal, socialist, redistribution, um, two-tiered system where you the people are, are made to play by different rules than we the elitists. Um, Draghi has sent military, more military aid to the Ukraine. This is actually what almost triggered this early election. He's focused on, yes, not just COVID, but also climate change. And people in his country are saying, wait a second, wait a second. We understand, we're starting to understand that what we're facing is not just a stupid politician with impractical policies, where they understand that what they're facing is Marxism. 